everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Tilly and I am a strength and conditioning coach and an exercise scientist. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video because you'll get to stay up to date with some really cool sports science discussions and it would be amazing to have you be a part of this very little community. And hopefully, I mean, you'll learn something new as well by being here, so win-win. Today, we are going to try and answer the question, to what extent do my genetics have an impact on my performance? Super, super loaded question, I know. In particular, we're gonna be looking at the extremes of sports. So we're gonna be looking at endurance runners, and then we're gonna be looking at strength and power athletes. Obviously, there's a bunch of sports that lie in between the two ends of that spectrum, but endurance and strength and power are just kind of like polar opposites. So I thought it would be fun to look at them. So the main gene that we are gonna be talking about today is responsible for stabilizing our sarcoma during explosive activities like sprinting. This gene is called alpha actinin 3, or in other words, ACTN3. I'm just gonna call it actin 3, just for like shorthand in this video. There are two main polymorphisms of this gene, and a polymorphism just means a different form or an alternative phenotype, so an alternative expression of the gene. There is the actin 3577R allele, and there is the actin 3577X allele. Now the R allele is the normal one, and it produces normal functioning proteins in our body. The presence of the R allele is associated with increased type 2 muscle fiber size or cross-sectional area, and it's associated with increased strength. The X allele, on the other hand, is the null allele, and it prohibits muscle production. Those of us who possess the X allele usually have less muscle strength, we have smaller cross-sectional area in those type 2 muscle fibers, and we usually get an increased endurance capacity with this version of the gene. Here is an amazing diagram that I'm going to share with you, and this just shows the different genes that are present in elite athletes across a variety of sports. In this diagram, we can see that the actin 3577XX is much more prevalent in the endurance Olympians, whereas at the other end of that spectrum with the sprint Olympians, we can see that they do not have the XX allele at all. I've just realized that I've probably been saying allele wrong, so I, I'm sorry. I like learn by reading it and then it's stuck in my head. <laughs> So bear with me on that. <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? I mean, you can see the different sports and then you can see the genotype frequency within each of those sports. I also really like comparing it to the controls because I think that's pretty interesting. So you can see people who aren't that active at all and then Olympians. That's a really, really cool paper in my opinion. I've got yet another diagram for you. That's just going to be the theme of this video. Just me chucking information at you. <laughs> in this one, if we have a closer look, we can see that the diagram compares control participants who are not particularly active with power oriented athletes at different levels of competition. The higher up we get in terms of competition, the less likely it is that we're going to see that X allele that's associated with endurance capacity or smaller type 2 muscle fiber size and less muscle strength. You can start to see how there's a bit of a pattern there, right? Absolutely, you can see that. And this is again demonstrated with sprint performance. So you can see those who perform really, really well in the sprint, guess what kind of gene they have? It's popped up so much in this video. I'm going to leave it for five seconds. You tell me what kind of gene it it is. Ready? That's the gene that they have. So when you think of people like Usain Bolt, I want you to think of him as down that end of the spectrum, right? Right. And again, I love how we can see it compared to the controls because you can see there's less of a difference in between the elite and the highly elite, but with those controls, you can really start to see where it picks up and genetics begins to matter. One last thing I'm gonna show you before I change up the discussion a little is this a really cool table showing us the presence of different genotypes within different levels of competition. Same thing, we can see a similar pattern emerging here. And while this is really cool, I mean, I find this insanely cool, it begs the question, how is this relevant to those of us who are not Olympians or at a really high level of competition? Why is it relevant? And it's relevant because the actin 3 gene may also determine your responsiveness to resistance training. Pickering and Keeley have proposed that the RR allele, so that one that we want if for strength and power performance, is associated with enhanced responsiveness to resistance training. It's associated with reduced muscle damage after eccentric exercise. It's associated with reduced injury risk and reduced flexibility. The same researchers suggest that on the other hand, the XX genotype is associated with a reduced responsiveness to resistance training. They suggest the XX genotype is associated with increased damage to the muscles after eccentric exercise, increased injury risk, and increased endurance and flexibility. If you want some clearer evidence illustrating this, I've got you. Let's look at what happens after 10 weeks of resistance training in men and women with different genotypes. After 10 
10 weeks of training, it was shown that men and women with the RR or the RX allele had greater increases in their peak power and relative power than those with the XX allele. And once more, while this is really, really cool to see, it doesn't answer the original question that I asked. And that is, to what extent does our performance rely on genetics? If you just base this on what I've shown you so far, then I suppose it could be interpreted as, well, if I don't have the right genes, I'm never gonna really succeed. And whilst I don't think this interpretation is entirely appropriate, I can see how one might have arrived at that conclusion. So let's take a look at whether or not we actually have control over our performance, or if it's all fated. To do this, we can look at heritability indexes. And this just means that we look at to what extent certain attributes are passed down from generation to generation. You can do this with twin studies and things like that. As it turns out, there does seem to be a high degree of heritability in strength and responsiveness to training. Based on this little table, we can actually see that the explosive power and the glycolytic capacity seems to have quite a high heritability index. However, because this index is not at one or it's not at 100%, this indicates that environmental factors may still be able to modulate the outcome. This means that although we can certainly get a boost from our genetics, we also have to train hard and put in the work. Otherwise, we're never going to be able to capitalize on that genetic advantage. This kind of reminds me of that saying, working hard beats talent when talent fails to work hard. If we don't work hard, it doesn't matter what our genetic potential is because we are not even going to remotely reach that ceiling. However, at that top, top level of competition where everybody is working hard, think the Olympics, World Championships, World Cups, then it could be very possible that a genetic predisposition to that certain sport could provide Provide you with a competitive advantage. I reckon it may be able to be argued though that you probably won't reach that top top echelon of competition if you didn't have the right genetics. Because at that level everything matters and maybe genetics are enough to give you that tiny tiny bit of extra competitive advantage. I personally think that it's far too reductionist to assume that athletic performance is solely reliant on your genetics. This just kind of doesn't take into account that mental acuity or that persistence that you need to become elite. There's this this little excerpt that I saw in a paper that I thought summed this up nicely. An advantageous physical genotype is not enough to build a top class athlete or a champion capable of breaking Olympic records if elite performance are not supported by a strong mental background. I think that pretty well sums it up. I really like this. What do you guys think? On this same note, and one really cool thing that I wanted to finish up with is that there has been some research into whether or not characteristics like resilience have a physiological or genetic component to them. And it turns out they might. One paper explored resilience as it relates to Navy SEALs. And if you know anything about the SEALs, the military, the army, whatever, you will know that these athletes have to be incredibly resilient. As it turns out, something called BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is partly responsible for neuroplasticity, is also pretty strongly correlated to resilience. Don't you guys find that interesting? I find that insane. <laughs> I'm reading a book at the moment called Grit by Angela Duckworth. And she makes the argument that hope and resilience and grit can be taught. And so maybe these characteristics can be taught. However, isn't it cool knowing that there's a biochemical basis for that stuff as well? I think it's really cool. That probably makes me a nerd. I'm not personally sure on whether where I stand on that or whether or not it can be taught because I've worked with a lot of different athletes and sometimes you just see something in particular athletes that others don't have. It's that grit, it's that, I don't wanna say X factor, but it's like that fire. On this same note, guys, every video from now on, I'm gonna pose a question to you guys. I'm gonna leave the question down in the description as well, but basically I wanna try and have some discussions with you all. And so for this week, the question I want to pose is, can you teach someone to have that fire or that competitive drive? Is it nature or is it nurture? What do you think? I'd love to have a chat with you all and find out your thoughts. Feel free to suggest some research or recommend another cool video that's related to this topic. I think this would just be a really cool way or fun way for us to build a little community and then try and learn something new and engage in open discussion. I also don't think I have to remind you guys, but anything that is outrightly bullying another user or is blatantly false misinformation, I'm going to delete. But with that in mind, please get commenting. I would love to hear what you think. And anyways, guys, that is it from 
me today. I hope you all learned something new. And as always, I've referenced everything down below in case you wanna check out some of that research for yourself. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And if you liked this video, please show some support by liking or subscribing as it will help the challenge grow and we would love to have you here on this page. Thank you guys for watching if you made it this far. I hope you have an amazing week ahead. Peace.